Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Ways Doing. We are on the cusp of June, and this is going to be kind of an incredible month, not my usual. First of all, I just got back from the US where I visited my parents for two weeks. It was absolutely wonderful seeing everybody. I got to see my brother and his kids and just wonderful family time. Also a lot of food because my mom's one of those people that shows love by feeding you and I can't really complain. It was really delicious. And I got a lot of books as you saw in that haul. So my June, I have several purposes, things going on. First of all, I want to read physical books because ideally, and I'll explain in a minute, all my physical books should fit on this shelf. And you saw the haul. That's going to be very hard ask from here unless I start reading down a whole bunch of stuff. So in June in general, I want to read physical books. It's also pride, happy pride. And I want to read queer books. That's not hard. <laughs> That's something I do all year round, but I especially look forward to doing it in pride. Most of those are ebooks though. I don't have a lot of queer books. They're usually self-published or smaller publishers, the ones I have anyway. So I don't have them uh, physically all that much. So that's like at a cross purpose. And what's throwing, it's not quite a wrench, but an interesting spin to everything is that I got back five days ago and today my husband left for a month long business trip, which is something he's never done before. We've never done before, like had to go through before. So it's been kind of madness here. I was trying to unpack while he was trying to pack messes all around. So the very beginning of the month here, my goals are a bit different than my month long goals because month long work down the TBR, read queer books to start in this Hello June vlog. I want to finish books that I've already started, get the house in order, get my life in order, enjoy my birthday, which is Sunday. And then after that, starting Monday, which will also be my first day back at work, get into the groove, do all that stuff all while just here by myself in the house. So it's going to be quite something. Let's dig in. Oh, let me show you the books. Here are the books that I need to put on the shelf. Now, Rebel I've already read. Absolutely loved. This doesn't count against me on the shelf necessarily. But all of these ideally would be finding a home here. And it's not just any old place on this shelf. But my TBR shelves are one, mass markets, two, that's mixed um, trade paperbacks and Japanese manga, three, a little bit of everything, and four, which is Japanese bunkos as well as some mass market paperbacks. Everything else down here is more storage and things that I've already read and love that I'm keeping, at least for now. So the shelves I have to work with really are here, 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 here. We're going to be doing some changes going to be making some new rules because I'm not against double shelving. <laughs> and one thing I'm thinking is like these Cresley Coles, these are all part of the same series. So I don't need to have all three books facing out. I just need to have the next book I'm reading facing out and the other ones I can put behind. I won't forget that I have them. That's not an issue. But uh, if I take these out, you can see I already have, ooh, hold on, bunches of double shelving happening back there. I'm going to have to do some hard thought though, because like those fruit basket manga, do I really want to keep those? I'm not sure. And then here, I'm not really in a Japanese reading mood at this very moment, but James Tiptree Jr. Her Smoke Rises, Her Smoke Rose Up Forever is a collection of her um, short stories. I've been meaning to read this for a while. She was queer, so I'm going to read this for pride. So I gave myself a little space there there's a little headroom there and yeah that so I'm going to start putting stuff in just to see where I stand okay so the Lorraine Heath these are three books in the same series so the first one is the only one I need to hang out and the thing is so in my haul that I just filmed just now I have one two three of the CL Wilson's and I said that I had book one I do not have book one I thought I have book one this is book like two three four so I'm just going to put book two out there and these hardbacks may have to get their own rule at some point but um yeah and the other thing I've decided is that London belongs to me I started reading this a while ago I got a good chunk in put it down never picked it back up and for a couple years there I was like oh I remember enough I could pick that back up anytime and now I don't and I don't have interest so you know what this can come off you see uh, yeah that's already double shelved great I'm done it went better than I thought. First of all, taking out 
London belongs to me means I could fit the next shell start book here, which is perfect. And I ended up putting the third one over here. That's cheating, but you know, got to keep the hardcover nice <laughs> here. These are that there first in a series, first in a series, not first, but you know, and then I move the manga up here. And now this is all presents and random stuff. And in the back there, I don't know if you can see little shadows. Those are books that are further on in a series. And then I'm cheating and putting them back there. And I was able to squish. This is packed pretty tight. <laughs> it's going to be hard getting a book out. Um, these three here, which means that left over, I have, this book was already on my shelf, as was this one. But four, that's not bad. That's not bad. And I also found this popped out one of the books. Vintage. So I mentioned that I want to finish books I already have on the go here in the beginning of the month before getting into my main priorities, right? And one of them is The Price of the Ticket by James Baldwin. I have made slight progress. But the essay I'm, in, essay I'm in right now is about 100 pages, about halfway through it. And once I finish with that, I think it'll be all downhill because it'll be shorter essays, easier to read one at a time than what I'm doing now. And then I have a whole bunch of ebooks that I'm currently reading. The easiest one to finish will be the one that I actually started today. I know. Release by Suzanne Clay, Erotic Romance. I'm enjoying that. Walk Through Fire by Yasmin Asali was one of my most anticipated reads. It is about a train disaster that was the impetus for forming FEMA. I had so much heavy nonfiction, though, that I was reading for the Book 2 Prize that I just kind of let it sit there. Very much looking forward to getting back to that. The More by Laurie R. King is in her Mary Russell series, which I enjoy very much. But the plot of this book is rather thin. And then on the bottom here, I have three advanced copies. The one that will be published first, so is higher in priority, is All the Right Notes by Dominic Lynn. Thank you forever for that advanced copy, as well as the advanced copy of Bookshelf Cinderella by Laura Lee Girk, which comes out later in the month, I think. So that's not at top of mind. Also coming out early, though, I think it's on the 9th, is Chasing the Bride by Erica Ridley. I fall into her books. That will be a nice treat when I get to maybe that'll be my birthday. that will be pretty cool. But this is where I'm standing right now. Happy June 1st! I am starting this morning with a virtual panel by Ashland Public Library about monster romance with some amazing authors including Anna Geary, C.M. Acosta, um, Lillian Lark, I'm forgetting people, but um, yeah, Catherine Moon! Eee! Excited! So it's June 1st, happy Pride! I have spent today working on my Booktube Prize video. It's just one long video this time. It's already up when this comes out. I'll leave a link up here. I'm talking about my reading experience for the quarterfinals and still have a couple things left to do. Still have to do my thumbnail, but the captioning is done. It's putting final touches on it now. And because of that, I haven't done the things I really wanted to today. And I'm taking care of one of them now, which is cooking, because I wanted to have, tomorrow we're expecting rain all day, there's a typhoon that's actually, there's things making noise on the stove, I have to stir. There's a typhoon that's coming, it's not going to hit Tokyo directly, but we are getting a bunch of rain, especially out ahead of it, and tomorrow it's supposed to rain all day. So, other than going out for a run in the morning in the rain, which I don't mind, I like running in the rain when it's this warm, um, I want to stay in the house, and I want to have lots of food, and just things ready to go, so that's what I'm doing right now. I have some pork that's marinating in miso and soy sauce and a bunch of other stuff with onions and I love this particular recipe because you put it in the pan cold and cook it very low for a long time and then it goes there. And then I have some greens, there's this, and yeah I'm just going to see how much I can make tonight. And yeah, so this is bleh, my brain. Captioning has, that's the rice cooker, but rice, <laughs> but rice, no not rice, captioning has made my brain mushy. It's early on Friday the 2nd and it has not been a good morning because I woke up ready to go on my long run and the rain was coming down so hard and when I checked the radar I could see that there were several more bands of heavy rain coming so just like okay fine I guess I'm not running today and then I looked at the forecast for tomorrow it's gonna be even heavier rain tomorrow morning so fine I guess I'm not running tomorrow morning it's that sucks so there's like boo that and then I had breakfast and my stomach immediately went off because I've been having like a stomach bug thing and breakfast was yep not fun so but but I ended up reading 
uh, and finishing. I was about halfway through. It's a short book release. Hello by Suzanne Clay. This is an erotic romance. Two people meet for anonymous sex. It turns out to be an amazing experience and then afterward they realize that he's a boss. Boss and employee is a pretty well-worn trope but I like where it went here because they really went into the power dynamics talking about you know is this really ethical? Can we make this work? What should we do? And there's a lot of hot sex scenes. The emotional journey each one of these people go on is also great and there's so much of it that is casually queer. The author is um, non-binary and this was a really great way to start off Pride Month. And speaking of, I have a new hoodie that I got when I was home. Visible Ally, whoa, hold on. Visible Ally for Trans Rights. This is from Point of Pride, which is an amazing organization that gets uh, binders and other shapewear to trans folks who need it completely free. Thanks to Leo Bancroft, thank you, that they have these shirts available. They also have um, shirts for trans people that say visible for those who can't be. Love it. And yeah, so I'm going to open the window and enjoy the cool that the rain has brought for a chance to be cozy in this hoodie. We're just quickly getting out of hoodie weather. But yeah, I'm going to do this watch the angels, and try to salvage the rest of my morning. All right, I have set up in the living room for the duration. I have price of the ticket, which I want to get through, peppermint tea, all of my pens, <laughs> and a ballpoint for writing in price of the ticket. Yeah, we're just going to hang out in here, listen to some music, and finally relax. So I've put everything together for dinner. It's basically throwing a whole bunch of ingredients into the rice cooker and pressing cook so that's really nice to have that going and I am getting quite a bit of reading done price of the ticket I finally can you hear the wind the wind is quite strong I am getting close I think I'm gonna finish this tonight at least that's the goal and I'm helped by the fact that I got through the hundred page essay and I'm on to much smaller things now that tend to fly by a bit faster so um, love James Baldwin just amazing I'm underlining I'm highlighting what can I say about this that hasn't already been said nothing. So um, that's the goal. And then once I do that, I'll be picking up, like I said, the tip tree. So progress being made. It got dark all of a sudden. So fake candle on, instant cozy. Saturday morning, there was rain and wind through most of the night. It has tapered off this morning. Now I have the window open and it's just, it's like what, 1030 now. And it's getting a little bit too warm for the hoodie already. I'm gonna have to let it go, but so there's that. I finished Price of the Ticket. I already put it away in my bookcase. I was just so happy to have it done because I actually started reading that last year in February. My spreadsheet tells me it's been 483 days since I started it. And can you say anything bad about Baldwin? No. He's amazing. His writing is amazing. There are some pieces that I maybe wouldn't have put in the collection. There were some that it's like, okay. So I ended up giving the whole thing a 4.5, but you know, I'll be very glad to reread it and prove myself wrong. For the rest of the morning and the rest of the day, I just want to enjoy myself and have fun and do what feels good. So I am watching the angels. I am responding to comments because I didn't do that while I was away. This is how my morning's going so far. After consulting Goodreads, I ended up DNFing The More by Lori R. King and I was just so done with it. I already erased it from my e-reader, so I don't even have something to hold up for you. I really like this series. It's the Mary Russell series. It's got Sherlock Holmes. It's uh, the interactions between them are really interesting. The historical flair in the writing I love. But this mystery is so boring. Really thankful for Goodreads because all the top reviews are like, yes, this doesn't get any better. <laughs> so, and it's saying it's skippable. So it's exactly what I'm doing. I'll pick it up with the next book, which is Oh Jerusalem. And that means I've finished three books. And most of the reads that I already had going, right? The only one I have left is Walk Through Fire which I'm just not in the mood for right now. Like, I don't really want to read about a disaster right around my birthday. I'm good. Um, so I am picking up all the right notes by Dominic Lynn. This actually comes out next week from Forever. Thank you so much for the advanced copy. And we'll see how it goes. Contemporary to gay guys have heard really good advanced press for it. So we'll see how it goes. I was surprised to see that they're replaying the Indy 500 on Japanese TV on a Saturday afternoon until I realize that there is a Japanese guy <laughs> in the lineup, which explains everything. See, there he is, currently ninth. No matter the sport, Japanese announcing just rocks sometimes. Ah. 
I didn't realize that this race would have so much carnage. Like after every restart, there's another crash. It's very bright behind me. I can't help it because the sun's going down and it hurts me to say this, but I am DNFing all the right notes, but it's not the book's fault. It's my fault because I knew there was angst in this. I didn't realize how much angst and I've gotten to 30% and we have gone over my current angst limit. Uh, we have two guys who went to high school together. One was the super popular jock and the other one was the accompanist for the school choir that uh, his dad was actually the choir teacher for. And um, stuff, some stuff happened back there, but we don't know what it is exactly yet. And this is part of the angst that's really driving this forward so well is because we have alternating chapters between then, back in high school, and now. And we know that something drove these guys apart to the point where they haven't spoken in 20 years, even though they obviously mean so much to each other somewhere. And yeah, they meet again. And this is where I'm at now, 30%. They're finally talking again for the first time after 20 years. And you can see the threads. Not even starting to come together, but just all the angst. Oh, I don't right now have the heart space for this much angst. But if you love angst, like I'm really enjoying the writing, the characterization is done well. I feel like I have a great picture of who these guys are. I love Kito's roommate who is just a joy of a drag queen. So this is one of those, it's not you, it's me, DNFs. And I guess I'm going to go on to the tip tree, which I still haven't started. But even though I'm not, I'm not really feeling in the mood to get into science fiction right now. I want the romance. Tell you what, I'll read the introductions and go from there. My watch is wishing me happy birthday. Sunday just afternoon and I'm having a really great day so far. I went on a morning run. I took a leisurely bath. I started, oh hold on, Chasing the Bride by Erica Ridley because there is there anything more cousin than starting an Erica Ridley book on my birthday? No! And I'm already halfway through it. It is quite good so far. We'll see how it ends up but we have a woman who has been betrothed to her father's ward buddy like they were in the army together. But his man of business is a nice guy who's more upright. And so when she escapes from her nuptials, uh, he ends up tr tracking her down saying, well, you know, I've been ordered to bring you back. She's like, would you mind like not bringing me back for like a week? Because that's when they've set the second ceremony to happen. And um, I may as well have one fun week in my life, right? And so they end up um, posing as a married couple because of things um, and things are going from here. I was kind of wishing it would be a marriage of convenience. I wanted him to step in at the altar and totally throw things into chaos, but we're going the slightly more logical route, which isn't bad either. So um, we will see how this turns up. I'm enjoying it a whole bunch though. Just Ridley does good banter and there's some decent banter in this. Been watching the Angels game. I already know they lost, but um, just watching the game, just randomly chilling, hanging out. My mother-in-law sent tea. Um, and just basking in the well wishes. I feel very loved today, which is cool. So now I'm going to go and get myself some cake. When you're by yourself, you have to get your own cake. Um, but there's a lovely, oh, such a good place. Cake. So last night I read the first story of Her Smoke Rose Up Forever and wow, wow, it's like nine pages and it's incredible. I also read the introductions, which mentioned that Tip Tree aka Alice Sheldon, trusts the reader and doesn't restate things, expects you to remember stuff, and you get a great payoff from that, and that because of that, your first time through a story, you may not catch everything. And that also makes it very rereadable at the same time. And I found even in this nine-page story, first of all, I got to the end, the top of my head was blown off, and I immediately went back to the beginning to go through it again, to look for something that I felt like I was missing something. It was like, oh yeah, that, and this is gonna take time. It's not something I'm gonna wanna blast through in a month. It's something I'm going to want to savor. So I'm going to scrap my plan to read this over Pride and put it back on the shelf. But I already filled up the space it had on the shelf. So this is where it needs to go back. So some of these manga Going to go back down here, and some of these have to... Yep, yep. All right, it's back in place. Move some stuff down there, and I have sacrificed two presents 
to the cause. So these are going to go in the overflow pile. Which I'm going to have to think about getting to sooner rather than later. Ah! Early evening and I have finished Chasing the Bride by Erica Ridley. I'm pretty okay with how this ended up. Um, which obviously I'm not going to say here because spoilers. The only thing that maybe bothered me a bit about this is the characterization of the hero because in the very beginning and at the very end it's just it's so obvious that he would do anything for her that he has been at least admiring her from afar um, for a long time now he wants to give this woman who has had no choices of her own in her life every choice to make for her own to do whatever she wants and to be able to provide for her in that way um, which is very sweet and lovely but then sometimes in the banter he almost got like this edge to him that didn't feel right like there's a way to banter without that edge but it was just a little ugh. so that didn't quite make sense but overall a solid addition to this this might be one of my favorite ones in the series so far actually and there's one more also by Ridley that's going to be an MM romance that I'm looking forward to and then the series will be done. This comes out, it'll probably be out by the time this um, vlog comes out. So thanks for hanging out with me over my birthday weekend. I hope you had fun and I would say subscribe if you haven't yet already because there's so much coming up this month and I mean I'm alone. I have all this time to make content, right? I also have um, my May wrap up is going to be epic. Haul is going to be pretty epic um, and a lot of other stuff planned including mid-month book bash next weekend. Guess what? Vlog. So if you have anything you'd like to gab about, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like I said. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.